Hey, hello again. We are back in our introduction to module three. In the previous video, I uh, reviewed the idea of what a fraction was. We talked about a numerator telling you how many you have, a denominator telling you how many it takes to make a whole. And we talked about the idea of reducing a fraction, which is dividing out all the common factors out of the numerator and the denominator until there are none left. And uh, we often call that reducing a fraction, simplifying a fraction. Uh, you're not really reducing the size of the fraction. The, the fraction's the same size. You're simply reducing the size of the numbers in the numerator and denominator. All right, so now we're going to take a look at multiplying and dividing fractions. Okay, so uh, multiplying and dividing fractions really should be the easiest thing that you do when you are working with fractions because as you probably recall when you add and subtract fractions you have to find a common denominator and you don't end up just adding the top and adding the bottom it uh, it involves some some complicated steps but multiplying and dividing you actually can just multiply straight across and you could actually if things were to work out nicely divide straight across so I'm gonna skip over here to number two and I could just simply go three times four is twelve and I could say five times seven is thirty five all right and over here, this 3, by the way, any whole number can be written as that whole number over 1. So the, the whole number there becomes the numerator, and 1 becomes the denominator. And then if I multiplied straight across, 4 times 3 is 12, and 9 times 1 is, excuse me, that's 9 times 1 is 9. All right? Okay, now why did I skip number one and why did I not take a look here at number three? Because these are bigger numbers, right? And while I happen to know that nine times seven is 63, I may not know what 14 times six is, right? It's going to be a little more complicated, 14 times six. Well, that happens to be the same as seven times 12, which I know is 84, but I certainly don't know what 8 times 33 is without going like this, right, and figuring it out that way. So you'll notice the instructions, which I did not read, which I probably should have read at the beginning. They say multiply, write the product in simplest form. In other words, your final answer should be simplified, like I talked about in the previous video. But one of the great things about multiplying fractions is you could actually simplify before you multiply, right? You can simplify before you multiply, and then you don't have to try to simplify when you're done. And the great thing about simplifying before you multiply is you can avoid multiplying some of these big numbers, all right? So I'm going to erase everything I did, right? And I'm going to write this down. If possible, here, let me write this. If possible, because it's not always possible. If possible, simplify before you multiply. So what does that mean? Remember, simplifying is writing it up, breaking it up into its factors, and then canceling out or dividing out the common factors. So I'm going to take a look at 9, and I'm going to say, okay, I happen to know that 9 is 3 times 3. Now, 7 is a prime number, so I'm going to simply write it as 7 times 1. 14 is 7 times 2, and 6 is 3 times 2. So I simply have taken each of these numbers and broken them up into their factors. Now, if I were to multiply straight across, on the top I would have 3 times 3 times 7 times 1, and on the bottom I would have 7 times 2 times 3 times 2. And as we saw in that previous video, any number divided by itself is 1. So I could take that 3 and that 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. I could take that 7 and that 7, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. So when I'm done, when all is said and done on the top, I have 3. I'm out of space. 3. And on the bottom, I have 4. So this simplifies to 3 fourths when we are done. Okay? 
Now, we don't usually do that step there. Usually what we do is we simplify here. We say, okay, that 7 and that 7 simplify there. And that 3, and by the way, it doesn't matter which of these 3's you use, but only use 1. All right, you can only cancel one from the numerator, one factor from the numerator with one factor from the denominator. Excuse me. And when we're done on the top, we get three times one, and on the bottom we get two times two. So our simplified answer is three fourths. All right. Now, if you take a look at this one, well, three is a prime number. That's three times one. Four is two times two. 5 is a prime number, which is 5 times 1, and 7 is a prime number, which is 7 times 1. So if you take a look at these factors other than 1, which doesn't help us, we don't have any common factors. So in this case, there's nothing we could do to simplify. So we simply multiply across. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 7 is 35. That one is not going to simplify. It is already in simplest form. All right, this one right here, 11 can be written as 11 times 1. All right, 8. 8 can be written as 2 times 4. 10 can be written as 2 times 5. And 33 can be written as 11 times 3. All right, now this is where you see it's very important you know your multiplication tables because if you don't know your multiplication tables, then this process is going to be much more of a challenge trying to determine what these common factors are. So here we go. That 11 and that 11 are going to divide out or cancel. That 2 and that 2 are going to cancel. And what do I get on the top? On the top, I get 5 times 1 or just 5. And on the bottom, I get 4 times 3 or just 12. Okay, and again, this one right here, I put that 3 over 1, right? 9 is 3 times 3, 4 is 2 times 2, 3 is 3 times 1, and of course, 1 is simply 1 times 1. And the only thing that I can divide out here is that 3 and that 3. Remember, you're only allowed to cancel or divide out 1. So on the top, I have 2 times 2, which is 4, and on the bottom, I have 3 times 1, which is 3. Okay? Now again, if you do not want to simplify before you multiply, you can you can always multiply and then simplify. Okay, you can always multiply and then simplify. But that's generally more complicated. So if possible, simplify before you multiply. And by the way, we multiply straight across. Sometimes students confuse this process with a different one where they multiply diagonally. Multiply straight across, okay? Multiply straight across. Again, it's exactly, if no one ever taught you anything about this, if you had never learned how to multiply fractions, it's probably what you would do. You would go 3 times 4 is 12, and 5 times 7 is 35. So that process is exactly what you would do. It's just generally we try to simplify before we multiply because it's more complicated to multiply and then simplify. Okay, so that's the process of multiplying fractions. All right, now dividing fractions could actually be the same, and I don't see any examples here that would work out. But let me take this one and switch it around right here. So let's say I had 16 over 27, and I wanted to divide by 4 ninths, okay? It actually could work out where you would go 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 27 divided by 9 is 3, and that would be the correct answer. If you're going, well, Mr. Reeves, why don't we always do it that way then? Well, because most of the time, that second number is not going to go into that first number. Or even if it works for the numerators, it's not going to work for the denominators. And then you get fractions inside of fractions, and it gets very complicated, okay? But I just wanted you to know, I remember when I saw that for the first time, I was blown away. How come no one ever told me that works? Because because it uh, usually will not come out to a nice clean number like that one does, okay? So what do we usually do? Instead of dividing, all right, we multiply by the reciprocal, okay? And the reciprocal of a number 
multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of a number is simply the, the, the number flipped over, the fraction flipped over. Okay, so the reciprocal of A over B, excuse me, the reciprocal of A over B is B over A. And the numerator becomes the denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator. Okay, so uh, if I were teaching this to you for the very first time and you'd never seen this before, I'd go through and explain why it is. But right now, I'm just going to tell you what to do. Okay, so I'm going to take this half. Okay, the first stays the same, and I change the division to multiplication, and I multiply by 4 over 1. All right, so sometimes I've heard students say, keep, change, flip, okay? The first one stays the same. Change the operation to multiplication and then flip, okay? So this next one's going to be 3 eighths times 16 over 13. This one right here is going to be 5 halves. Sorry, excuse me. Keep, keep the first one. 2 fifths times 15 over 14. This one's going to be 9 fourths. No, again, I did it again. Wow, I need some more coffee this morning. 4 ninths times 27 over 16. Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. 3 fifths times 6 fifths. 1 fourth times 24 over 23. Keep, change, flip. 6, by the way, again, is 6 over 1. 6 over 1 times 5 over 3. And keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. 4 fifths times. And by the way, 10 is the same as 10 over 1. So when you flip it, you get 1 over 10. Okay? So dividing, all right? It's kind of like when we did adding and subtracting with integers. Remember, you would change subtracting to adding the opposite. Remember that? You change subtracting to adding the opposite. We change division to multiplying by the reciprocal. All right? Multiply by the reciprocal. And then it's just the process we went over, right? 4 would be 2 times 2. All right? 2 is 2 times 1. We could cancel one of those 2s, and we'd end up with 2 over 1 or just 2. All right, on this one, 16 is 8 times 2. 8 is 8 times 1. We could cancel off those 8s. 3 and 13 are prime, by the way. That's why I didn't break them up. On the top, I'd get 3 times 2, which is 6. And on the bottom, I would get 1 times 13, which is 13. All right, on this one, I would change 15 to 5 times 3. I would change 14 to 7 times 2. Right, 2 is 2 times 1, 5 is 5 times 1. So that 5 and that 5 can simplify out. That 2 and that 2 can simplify out. And what do we have left on the top? We have 1 times 3, which is 1. And on the bottom, we have 5 times 7, which is 35. Okay, again, last one here I'm going to do. 4 I could write as 2 times 2. 27 I could write as 9 times 3. 9 I could write as 9 times 1. And 16 I could write as 2 times 8. But as I'm looking here, 16 is 2 times 8, but 8 is 2 times 4. All right, so the reason I did that, as I saw up here, this was 2 times 2. In fact, you know what? I'm actually changing my mind here. I'm going to change this 4 to 4 times 1 and 16 to 4 times 4. I think that makes a little more sense. Okay, 4 is 4 times 1. 16 is 4 times 4. That 9 and that 9 are going to cancel. That 4 and that 4 are going to cancel. And what are we left with? 1 times 3, which is 3. And on the bottom, 1 times 4, which is 4. We get 3 fourths. Okay? All right. And real quickly, because we did this very recently... Order of operations. Do you remember order of operations? PEMDAS, right? All right? Here we go. There's not a lot of room here. Here, I'll do it over here. P-E-M-D-A-S, right? Hopefully you remember this. The P says do what's inside the parentheses first. The E says do exponents next. Multiplication and division, remember we do, from 
left to right and then addition and subtraction from left to right so if i were doing this problem down here all right it has subtraction and division well subtractions down here divisions up here so i would divide first and then i'd get 21 minus 2 which is 19. this one right here i have subtraction so i would do the subtraction first inside the parentheses i should have said i'm doing the subtraction first because it's in the parentheses if there were no parentheses i would not be doing the subtraction yet but because it's inside the parentheses 7 minus 4 is 3 so then i have 18 plus 3 times 3. they're using the x for multiplication i'm going to go ahead and do the dot all right what comes first addition or multiplication well multiplication comes first so then that would be 18 plus 9 which would be 27 right this one right here what am i going to do inside the parentheses first that gives me 5 so then i have 5 plus 5 squared now i have addition and exponents well addition is way down here exponents is up here so then i would do 5 plus 25 and i would get 30. All right, I'll do this one last here. Last one I'm going to do, number 17. I'm going to go inside the parentheses first. 3 minus 1 is 2. So I have 2 to the 4th times 3, right? So I have 60 minus 2 to the 4th. Let me make that a little more clear. All right, and again, I'm going to use a dot for multiplication. All right, now I've got subtraction, multiplication, and exponents. Subtraction's down here. Multiplication's here. Exponents, so I do exponents. All right, 2 to the 4th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16, okay? Now I have multiplication and subtraction. Again, multiplication is up here. Subtraction is down here. So then I do 60 minus 16 times 3 is 48, and now I'm ready to subtract. 60 minus 48 is 12. Okay, so your review assignment, uh, are you ready for module three, involves you multiplying fractions, which I showed you how to do, dividing fractions, which I showed you how to do, and order of operations, which we did recently, but I just went over again. All right, if you need more, more help than this video offers, feel free to email me. You could also search for other videos, helpful videos, on YouTube or Khan. Academy. All right. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you next time.